Hi everyone. Welcome to our capstone presentation. My name is Roshan George and my partner is Arnav Islam. So for our capstone, we decided to create a detection mechanism for built-in cameras inside of a laptop. So since the incorporation of cameras being built into daily used electronics, such as laptops and desktops, the concern for privacy has been in significant demand. There is currently no application or software on the market that can determine whether a user's laptop camera has been accessed or is actively being used in real time. So our solution to this problem was to create an application that launches as soon as the operating system boots up. It will continually run in the background and it will push an alert to the user as soon as the program detects that the camera has been turned on without the user's knowledge or consent. Um, at this point, the user can then quickly either turn off the camera, physically block it, and then can scan their PC for uh, malware to resolve the issue. So according to a survey of laptop users, most individuals are unaware of how easy a camera may be hacked and how it can breach their privacy. Um, a study performed by CamPatch stated that 51% of laptop users did not know it was possible for a hacker to remotely access and turn on webcams, allowing cybercriminals to secretly watch and record unsuspecting victims. The problem that will be addressed throughout this project is increasing user security by creating a detection mechanism for when the computer camera is turned on without the user's consent. When we first started the research portion of this project, we wanted to see what other programs or applications already existed that addressed this problem of a user's laptop camera being accessed without their knowledge. We discovered applications that prevented this from happening on smartphones, but surprisingly, we were not able to find any programs built for computers or laptops. Through our research, we were only able to find tips on how to identify if a user's camera has been hacked. And these tips assume that the damage has already been done and the laptop user is trying to eliminate the problem. We could not find any solutions for preventing an attacker from breaching a user's camera privacy in real time. So the tips that most of the um, articles and websites had to, to check whether you think that your camera had been hacked was to look for the camera indicator light to see if that was turned on. Um, but we now know that uh, the hackers could also program that light to be turned off. So that's not very helpful. Um, other things would be to check your browser extensions um, because not all of them are really safe. Um, and then they also said to check your, your task manager to see if um, the camera process is running um, and that sort of thing. So finally, after all of our research and necessary information gathering, we finally reached our proposed solution. So it, that was to create an application with a detection mechanism that communicated with the camera at the hardware level. Um, we'll explain later in the presentation why we didn't go with the software approach um, in terms of communicating with the camera. Um, we also decided to implement an algorithm to detect whether the camera is being accessed or not. Uh, my partner Arnab will go over that in the next couple slides of how we got that to work. Um, and essentially it would send an alert um, via a desktop notification to the user if the algorithm detects as soon as the camera has been turned on. Um, we also decided that we would fully automate this process so that the application is constantly running in the background. Um, and it starts as soon as the OS boots up. So that way the user doesn't have to manually go and start this uh, process every time. Our camera detector application is a Linux friendly application. 
We chose Linux because it's more open source compared to other operating systems, and that allows us to be more innovative to communicate with the hardware. We have used Python and Bash scripts to build our application. To communicate at the hardware level, we used kernel modules and learned the physical address of the camera driver as well as the status of the camera. Learning the physical address of the camera driver was important to make the detection mechanism reliable. Our application also starts at boot time and continues to run in the background to monitor the status of the camera every five seconds. In our Python script, we use Python's OS module that allowed us to communicate with the Linux terminal. We then list all the kernel modules that are active in our Linux machine and we look for a specific module called UBC Video. In Linux, UBC Video is the kernel module that is responsible to run camera hardware. Since physical address of the camera driver is static, we knew that using UBC Video is going to be reliable for this mechanism. Looking in depth of UBC Video, we can determine the status of the camera. As shown in figure 2, zero value means the camera is not accessed and any value other than zero means that camera is being accessed by an application. When our mechanism detects that the camera is being accessed, it sends out a notification to the user. Our Bash script is very simple as its purpose is to run the Python script in a loop. The Bash script runs the Python script every five seconds for demonstration and testing purpose, but realistically, it should run about every 20 minutes to keep the CPU resources free. To run our program when the computer boots up, we use CronTab. CronTab is a Linux-friendly time-based job scheduler. Each job is treated as a cron job, and we set our cron job to run the shell script at boot time using the keyword reboot as shown in figure 4. This cron job is also responsible to push the desktop notification from the notification bus to alert the user when the camera is being accessed. So these are a few of our setbacks and initial approaches that we took that did not work. Um, so when we first started the project, we initially thought that we could create a program to look at the task manager specifically for the word camera and notify us as soon as the camera was in use. Through a quick test, we noticed that whenever we opened the actual camera application, the task manager would display the process name camera. However, if we use the camera through another application such as Discord or Facebook, the task manager would display the name Discord or Facebook and not camera. So because there are millions of applications that can use a laptop's built-in camera, and since each of them have different names, we concluded that this approach was not feasible. So this is a screenshot of the task manager within Linux that we had used. Um, and I'm just trying to point out the same process, but with different names, um, as I mentioned in the previous uh, slide. So if you look at the second arrow um, at the bottom there, it says io.elementary.camera. This is the process name for when we actually just turned on the camera within Linux. And then the first arrow at the top says user slash share slash discord. This was the camera name or process for the camera when we used it through Discord. So again, it was not a viable option to use this approach because each different application had its own name for the camera. Our second approach was to look at the process ID of the camera when it was in use and use that value to send us an alert. However, through a bit of research and testing, we noticed that every time the camera application was closed and opened again, the process ID would change to another number. Because of the random process ID values given to the camera application for every new instance that it was used, we decided that this approach was also not possible.
Um, also, initially, we were going to develop this camera detection program for the Windows operating system because it's one that um, most people use daily, and it's something that we're comfortable using. Um, however, when we realized that we had to communicate with the camera at the hardware level, because things like the task manager and the process ID approaches weren't working, um, we noticed that Windows just had too many restrictions, and it made it difficult for us to reach the physical location of the camera. So because of this, we decided to work with an operating system that was more open source, um, and we just defaulted to Linux. So now that our program has been fully built and we're, we're now presenting our product, um, there's always room for more development um, and areas of further study. So an area in which our camera detection program can be further developed to operate even better could be to implement this functionality for a user to receive an alert on their phone for when their laptop camera has been turned on unexpectedly. Um, this feature would allow the user to receive the notification on another device other than just their computer. And it allows them to be aware of the situation even when they are away from their laptop. Um, the same sort of logic can be used and applied to different things like um, your home security camera systems. If someone were to um, hack into those and, and, and be able to spy on you, um, our same sort of logic and detection mechanism could be applied to alert you of that problem. Um, again, the same type of logic can also be applied to um, uh, like a detection mechanism for your built-in microphones in your laptop. It's not only, if a, if a hacker can um, get into your camera, then there's a good chance that they can also exploit your microphone and listen in on you as well. Um, yeah, so that's just a bit of uh, different areas of further study. Um, in the next slide, we're just going to show you a, a quick demo of how our um, program works. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it.